Good morning. Good morning, Your Majesty. Uh, may I present with me today the artist Miriam Escovet and by video link from India, Sanjivita McDonald Terian, and by video from France, Alethea Lai Flower. Welcome back to the Foreign Office, Your Majesty. And there is a particularly strong bond between the sovereign and the foreign office because we are Your Majesty's diplomatic service. And we have worked very closely with you, ma'am, throughout your reign on over 100 outward state visits and 111 inward state visits. But we're gathered here today for a unique event uh, to have, we think, the first ever uh, unveiling of a royal portrait by remote control. And now, with Your Majesty's permission, Miriam and I will unveil her picture of Your Majesty. Very well, that's very good. Yes, because the last time I, I saw you, you, you said it was going to take you some time to, to finish. I did, yes. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> I have quite a slow painting technique. I use a lot of glazes and a lot of work. Yeah. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to work. Well, I'm glad to have had a chance to see it. Hope I'll see it in real life one day. Ma'am, we would like to brief you about what the Foreign and Commonwealth has been doing uh, in the national effort to counter COVID-19. Uh, this has involved the whole of the Foreign Office at home and overseas. Normally, ma'am, in this building, there are two and a half thousand people and 900 of them shifted to uh, COVID-19 work uh, on many different aspects. Uh, the single biggest aspect was the repatriation of British nationals from overseas. In the end, a total of 1.3 million people were helped home, uh, and 38,000 of them came on special charter flights. The single biggest element was the effort in India, where we organized 66 charter flights. And we have on the line Sanjibita in Kolkata, and she was central to that effort. Uh, so now I will hand over to Sanjibita to tell her story. I'm hugely honored and privileged to have this opportunity to tell you about the India COVID work uh, on behalf of all my colleagues. So um, my role during uh, the uh, COVID was to manage the consular response for East and Northeastern India. And basically it was to plan the individual repatriation journeys because the area that we covered was huge. It took minimum two days to travel by road and uh, also to liaise with the government authorities, um, manage uh, issues which were being faced uh, in the state borders uh, because of uh, the check post and also managing uh, the airport access uh, for smooth transition for our nationals. Because I mean, a lot of people <laughs> go to India. <laughs> To visit? Yes. Uh, in fact, in you know, uh, on the 66th flight, we helped repatriate around uh, 18,000 British travelers back to UK during the COVID response. So, yes, we do have a big, big uh, British community traveling and visiting India. It does a, does a lot, isn't it? Yes. Your Majesty, uh, with your permission, I would like to share one of the longest journey uh, of our repatriation uh, which we dealt with in India. Uh, this was uh, a young British national who was stranded in a very remote village in Nongman uh, in Manipur which is in the northeastern part of India and uh, she was vulnerable because she was very young. Uh, all her essentials were running out and uh, the entire India was on a nationwide lockdown. We had a complete lockdown for 67 days. So it was a very, very difficult situation. Um, 
and then you know uh, with our local use of local contacts um, i managed to persuade uh, the superintendent of police um, in ukrul uh, who then kindly understood our problem and then organized his own car to then you know help a british national travel right from uh, nongman village to manipur imphal and then to kohati where um, there was another car waiting to take her and from there to delhi a real satisfaction to see when she arrived in delhi safely to be able to take her flight well, that must have been very wonderful for you to have achieved that absolutely your majesty thank you sanjeevita um so your majesty sanjeevita clearly was at the heart of the effort to get citizens back home Uh, but there were many other elements besides including procurement for personal protective equipment and also vaccinations and also help for the most vulnerable countries and so alethea will now talk about that over to you alethea and the head of vaccines and global health in the fco in the covid uh, directorate and i've been working for the last 4 months um mainly to get the right information to the right people at the right time so working very closely with our embassies and with other colleagues around whitehall and in other government departments to make sure people had the right information to make very quick decisions to help support the uk um fight the covid pandemic and i think one of the proudest moments um of my time uh, in the last 4 months working with my team and other colleagues on the global vaccine summit which the uk hosted of course and it, yeah. yes you, you you may remember it it was um the first virtual summit we had ever hosted how lucky we have the technology to do this nowadays It is fantastic. There was a moment at the very beginning of the summit where the presenter started speaking and there was no sound. So everybody spent 5 seconds terrified that this wouldn't work, but fortunately, um everything everything sorted itself out and the technology did work and so we were able to proceed. And I think the summit lasted over 4 or 5 hours, so it was quite exceptional. I'm sure, yes. Uh, this is an awful lot of of things to be gathered like the protection too for people isn't it that's right it was a huge effort and again fco working very closely with our overseas embassies um who worked incredibly hard and with other colleagues around government to make sure we were getting the right equipment but i think we brought in over 16.8 million items of personal protective equipment for our frontline workers here in the uk who are you know fighting the the virus here for us so it was it was quite quite something and of course we had to do it very quickly so it was a real testament to our colleagues around the world to who yeah uh, work very quickly and effectively to get that that job done well i've always thought it was amazing how quickly your colleagues can adapt to doing something completely different to what they're supposed to be doing <laughs> yes and i mean i think i remember um going home and leaving the the office at, in early march and within 2 weeks i think like simon said 900 people were doing completely different jobs from their kitchen tables no longer going into the office so it was really quite something to be part of indeed i uh, suppose there were all, everybody in the fco has been doing the most incredible work I must say i'm very impressed to hear about it well ma'am if i may say that was exactly the impression we wanted to leave you with so thank you for that assessment well that's very glad well i'm i'm glad to be able to do this this morning very nice to see everybody and very impressed Thank you.